Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm going to guess there's something in here you've not seen before. Show up the box and have a look. This was sent to me by Dom. Wow, look at that. I can guarantee you've not seen one of these before. I certainly haven't. Modern mobile phone, hey? It comes with a nice... Uh, mind you, some of the original mobile phones were about this size, weren't they? It comes with a nice little case. A bit worn, but nonetheless, it's uh, it's got a case. And um, we shall see what it's doing and what it's not doing. Let's do our usual and read what Dom has to say. He's written a little note here. Trandy phone. Transmits on 27.125 AM, channel 14 and receives. Bit crackly, volume switch. Other channels not working, crystals missing. Well, we, we probably won't be able to do much about that. Emblem missing on the front. Dom. Okie dokie. Right, we shall have a little look and see if we can um, give this thing a bit of a once over. I'm sure some of the capacitors must be uh, quite worn in it. So um, let's just, um, let's first see if Dom is right and we'll power it on and see what it's doing. Trandy phone, meet the President Randy phone. There you go, there's, your, there's the size difference with the President Randy. And uh, just because not everybody knows how big a President Randy is. I should put a UV5R down there in comparison for you. There's a UV5R next to all three. And suitably we should use a penny coin. Yeah, well, let's have a look at a little look to see if we get the back off with the penny first. And here we are. There's a 9 volt battery and let's see what this plate says. 10 transistors, model number there, frequency channel 1 27075, channel 2 27125, uh, dot type approval number, and there's the type approval number, and it's Transwave Electronics Limited, made in Japan. And here we can see that your channel selection there is behind the flap there, so you've got um, the two different ones selected, obviously Dom's moved it over to the one that's available. Um, and okay, so let's just, um, he's left a battery in it, so let's have a little, just check and make sure that's okay. And then we'll do some testing. All right, that, um, I thought I'd take the top case off. So that's, that screw there lifts the top case off. And that's an all metal affair. As you can see, they're sprayed with that um, color, so that's sprayed. Wow, now it is a little bit delicate. This is some foam in the back there, which I've got to be a bit careful of. I don't want to get any uh, cleaning spray on there. Uh, you can see the antenna lead appears to be just tacked onto the outside of the antenna there, which is slightly strange. And the base of the antenna is just bolted in there. So that's a little bit odd for a start. Um, lots of transistors dotted around in here, I can see and some capacitors. Now, I'm not so sure whether it's worth changing these capacitors. Sometimes you have to make a bit of a judgement call really on whether something is so unusual that you want to leave it as it originally was, if it's still working. Um, as long as it's working there or thereabouts, I think just a general service, a bit of switch cleaner in the PTT. Uh, there's like a, sh a shrouded rubber hood over, over this volume switch. If I can carefully pull that away, maybe we can get some cleaner in there if it needs it um, but other than that I, I don't think sometimes like I say with the real vintage stuff you can do more damage by trying to squeeze in a few more hundred yards out of it um, than it's worth doing so you can see there the other channel socket which is now devoid of crystals and you would be um, struggling I would think to get uh, crystals for this now well you certainly could but that would certainly cost you um, so just an interesting design, um, really uh, of its age, I'd like to know the age of it, I would say it's probably early 60s, um, probably 63, 62, something like that, um, I'm not so sure, 100%, if somebody knows, do let me know. There's an emblem missing off the front, I'll do a bit of a look around, see if I can find anything that goes there. And um, but it's just a thing of beauty. I mean, the, this is in immaculate condition. You see the um, the texture on that gold plating at the bottom there, and the overall texture of the whole thing itself is in amazing condition, and um, still has a perfectly good antenna as well, which is lovely to see. 
So we will do a field test with this, I think, but I think what I'm gonna do off camera, just do a bit of cleaning up, and then we'll do our test and, uh, and see how it performs. And if I do have to start digging around, I might, but probably not likely. I'll probably, this is, uh, this is a lovely vintage thing. And if, if it's working, you can see the bits of foam are, are falling out of it. And um, I don't really want to disturb that. I want to leave that in the radio if I can. And you'll notice under these, underneath this little bath plug type arrangement, this little screw cap, we have a three and a half mil jack for the, for the audio. I've just given that a bit of a clean with some switch cleaner. Right, we've got the tiny SA generating a signal there with this little antenna. And we just got the radios lying on the desk. All right, let's just see what that sounds like. So that's the Randy. Sounds a little bit tinny and weird, but I think the, the tranny phone sounds the same. So let's take that one off and try this. That's sounding pretty much similar. So let's reduce the signal level then down to something a bit less and see how the Trandy phone does then. Right, that's about the limit on the Trandy phone. That's about the limit of the signal. But right, minus 23 dBm. So let's let's see how the uh, how the Randy does. Not a lot of difference there. Look, the Randy's only just getting it as well. So in terms of receive, I think this is going to be okay. Yeah, there's very little to no modulation on the uh, Tandy phone. Well, there is some. One, two. You can just hear it there off in the corner on the Randy there. But we can't get even any feedback. We've got it right next to it here. And if there's any modulation there, we should have good feedback. One, two, one, two. I imagine that's probably down to capacitors inside the set here. Um, I'll show you another thing, another interesting thing on the antenna. You see that section on the middle of the antenna there? It looks like a repair has been done, but if it has been, it's been done very nicely. I don't think that is a repair. It looks to be, I, mean, I don't know how you could re do a repair like that. Quite amazing. Not seen that before. But then again, I've not seen this radio before, so. We've still got a rather a crackly uh, on off um, volume knob, so I'm gonna at least try and tackle that and see if I can get the, the hood off of it. I have put some spray in across the side, but it's not doing the job. So we'll see if we can at least sort that out. That might help with the modulation side of things as well, but I imagine it's capacitors. All right, we can pull the little rubber hood just back enough to get the uh, screwdriver in the top of there and try and get some cleaner in. Just undoing the centre nut off of the volume control, the little rubber boot then lifts off, as does the little metal plate, and it's contained on the PCB, but if you just look underneath there, I should be able to get some cleaner in at that angle, I think, uh, from that edge. Otherwise, it's a bored out job to clean that. Can't see any other way of doing it, so I'll try and feed some switch cleaner under there into that pot, and... Um, you know, that's as best as we can do, really. Yeah, that seems to have uh, done the trick. We'll just put these pliers on there. Give it a turn. Lost our... Haven't got the crackling problem now. That's good. So, that at least has fixed that problem. That was quite a job getting that back in there. Well, I've got it back in there. This is a rubber grommet to seal it from the outside, of course. There it is. Put some fresh thread lock back on there as well. So... It has got a bit of a dent in the side there. Okay, so yeah, I think that's about as much as we can do with this, really. I'm not taking it apart. Um, we'll leave those capac capacitors as are. Certainly on the audio receive side, none of those capacitors appear to be bad. Um, so we could go to all that trouble of taking out those capacitors, thinking they're bad, uh, and still not get any better uh, modulation. And I can't see, without um, some kind of circuit diagram, I don't know what would affect the modulation, whether we could adjust any of that, but it seems to be receiving and transmitting on frequencies. I'm loath to adjust things, really. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that as far as tampering goes. And we've got it a lot better. Okay, in terms of doing a quick test, I thought 
we would use this. If you've not seen uh, the, the video I did on these lovely little walkie-talkies, these ones, similar vintage to these ones, probably not quite as old, but a nine a nine volt uh, set, so similarly low powered. Um, we will take the Randy out as well, uh, just to sort of compare them. But I think we'll do a test between this one and this one out in the field, just to just see uh, what what they because uh, this is on 14 as well, uh, just to see how they perform and I'll have to come up with I really can't find any other images on this radio to know what this logo was on the front here this little badge I'm going to do a bit more digging around to see if I can find anything but it's not looking hopeful unfortunately uh, so I have to um, I have to perhaps uh, come up with something a little design and print something on there either with the resin printer or the uh, the normal SLA printer We've had a really good look around for information on the company um, Transwave Electronics, based in Canada, obviously imported this stuff in from Japan. And I was thinking, oh, what, what the hell could that logo be? And then it dawned on me to look at the case. And uh, as you can see on the front of the case here, there's a, a logo still on there. And it looks like a, a sort of a W shape, doesn't it? What I'll do is I'll get that under the microscope and I'll have a really good look at it and see if I can see exactly what that is. And then um, we'll we'll 3D print one on there, I think. Over that, I'll do a little sticker. Maybe a sticker might be better than a 3D printed thing. And uh, we'll try and mimic the same size as that because I'm pretty sure the way this lines up with the case that that's what we're looking at, isn't it? And I cannot find any other images apart from the original eBay sale for this online for any for this radio at all, which is not unusual. Uh, I think I had the same with these ones. I couldn't find any anything online about them, so you will find that with these radios. And yeah, I, I've, I've been looking, I've been digging all the usual haunts. The company that made these did also... The company that sold these, um, uh, they also sold hi-fi equipment and things like that in the early 60s. And on the back of this, it's um, it's uh, it's had a little bit of stapling and stuff and stitching and stuff. But we've got Made in Japan proudly stamped on the back of that. So, um, yeah, there the, the, the may well be information we could find out about it. Um, that's the inside of the case, bit of felt backing, which has kept this well protected over the years, um, I have to say. So that is a good thing about cases. So I think we'll we'll try and do something around the similar lines to that, and and we'll stick that on there. I think it needs to be sort of gold, doesn't it? It needs to match this this fitting. I'm sure I can come up with something that's going to look look nice. And who's going to question it? Because, you know, if you can send me a picture of one of these, and then, uh, you know, perhaps we can question it. But uh, I think we'll we'll definitely do something for it there. Because I'm, I'm good at stuff like that, you might have noticed. So I jumped onto Design Spark and came up with this little idea of a little badge that we can push through the existing location holes on the radio. The logo is there top left on the inside of the battery cover. It gives us something to go by. It's like a sine wave. So I took that into an illustrator and popped the sine wave in and, the, and got it looking exactly as the logo does there with the border. And then this is what I came out with to bring into the label maker, which is a brother label printer. We popped the, um, the 3D design onto Cura put that out to the printer and then we printed off the label for the badge and this is what it looked like. There we go. That's come out pretty decent. Well, uh, certainly better than having just a hole on the radio anyway. So, uh, there we go. That's certainly better than the gap that was there before, isn't it? I think we'll clean the uh, little bit of excess glue off afterwards. Wait for it to dry. So, um, we'll be able to take that out in the field with Tyler and do a little bit of a test, so uh, I think I'll leave it there for this evening. Right, I've come out to the field. It's a little bit blowy today. We'll just do a, a quick test on these radios. And we bought the two vintage radios out and the Randy, so we can test in between all three if need be. I'm not expecting great things, but let's just see how we get on. Right, so we're going to be using this one. Tyler's going to be using this lovely old vintage radio. And like I said, if you've not seen the video on this, have a look on the channel on the pair of these. These are pretty good for nine volt vintage AM sets. There's probably going to be some uh, foreign interference on. I did hear something a minute ago, uh, but it's looking a bit clearer. We are, we have come here at sort of, uh, as the sun is setting, whether that makes a difference to that, I don't know, but um, I'll get the trandy, the trandy phone out. We'll go and stand halfway and do our test. Right, here's the trandy phone. 
out in its glory. There's the new badge on the front. We'll try Tyler. Hi there, Tyler. I wonder how well you can hear me. Are you recording on your... Yes, I can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, that's great then. Um, we'll go, I'll go to the other side of the field. I can hear you okay as well. Okay, so I stop recording. Yeah, okay, that's great then. Um, we'll go, I'll go to the other side of the field. I can hear you okay as well. Okay, so I stop recording. Yeah, if you want to stop recording, I'll go to the other side of the field. Okay. Well, that's about the limit on receive. We're now at the other side of the field. Tyler's right the way over there. I think we're on the, on the limit. But I'll uh, get out of the wind. I'll turn this way. Try and get out of the wind a little bit. So Tyler's just said he's recording. It's quite windy now. Hi Tyler, okay, I'll give you a quick over on the Shrandy phone. One, two, three, four. Hi Tyler, okay, I'll give you a quick over on the Shrandy phone. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. I can hear you, but it's still a bit muffled. Okay, mate, it's still a bit muffled. What I'm going to do then, I know just a bit of video, I'm going to try uh, my other radio, my, my new radio, okay? Press the phone, so you can stay recording, I'll be back on in just a second, you can record in, okay? Right, we just tried Tyler on the Randy from here, just as a bit of fun. Hi there, Tyler, now I've got the President. Hi there, Tyler, now I've got the President. I can hear you a lot better now. Hi Tyler, can you uh, hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. Okay, yeah, I mean, so the Randy's not doing much better from that radio, so I don't think the Trandy phone's doing too bad, actually. Give us the quick brown fox. Actually, give us the quick brown fox. Yeah, so the Trandy phone was only a little bit worse. Yeah, so the Trandy phone was only a little bit worse than that, to be honest. Um, that wasn't too bad at all. Okay, uh, you can stop recording your end. I'll come back to you, mate. I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay. Well, do you know what? I think it's done pretty well, that old thing. The old Trandy phone. I think my logo's looking good. What do you think? Um, it's certainly better than not having a logo. Almost unscrewed the top of the antenna there, so Don might want to watch that. Maybe a little bit of thread lock on there, just in case, but I almost lost that, so. But yeah, overall, I think that's pretty darn good. I mean, you could obviously get the receiver a little bit better, but you run the risk of damaging that board. That's the trouble, you see, um, damaging the circuit board. So anyway, I think, I think that's a fantastic piece of history, radio history, very, very rare. Uh, we're gonna box this up and carefully send this back to Dom in the post. Uh, because I don't think you'll be seeing many of these so I thought it was well worth documenting on the channel so let's uh, let's wrap this video up if you have stayed to the end many many thanks uh, please click like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and we'll catch you on the next one take care